Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Last night was a bit of an adventure. My son found a leak behind our bathtub. We thought originally it was the faucet that had finally just gone bad with some seals that had been shot. Uh, so we were expecting to replace a faucet. After uh, making our own access panel, I noticed there was a puddle down here in the tub trap area in the dirt just underneath the slab. Now I was going to create an access panel uh, so that when we do go redo our bathroom, we don't have to, you know, cut another hole in the wall. But this is our guest room, and my mom is the primary person that sleeps in here. And I think she would have a conniption if she saw an access panel here. So I'm just going to patch up this wall. So, I had to enlarge my cuts to halfway through the thickness of each stud so that my new piece has something to grab onto. Likewise, I had to enlarge this giant, this little hole into a giant hole so that I could reach the next stud. So now I'm just test fitting my pieces. This one here is going to go like so. That looks pretty good. This piece here, I measured twice, cut once, and it doesn't quite fit. It's a little tight right here. I could force it in, but I don't want to damage the sheetrock on either side. So I'm going to trim this piece just a little bit. And there you have it. Not too big a deal. There we go. Wow, that's tighter than I'd expected. Now, I'm not just going to anchor in the new pieces. I'm also going to have to put a couple screws in the existing piece as well, because it's no longer in this corner anchored to the studs. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Sounds like I need to take a break. I'll be back later. Well, I'm back. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and apply my joint compound into all my cracks here. And then I will lay my joint tape along each seam. Uh, you can't apply a whole lot of this at any one time because it shrinks real bad. And then when it shrinks, it cracks. I'm going to go ahead and go over just a bit because I have to give something for my joint tape to stick to. Even though the joint tape has a sticky side, it's still not very sticky. So I like to go ahead and put down a layer of joint compound first and then basically just embed the joint tape in the compound. About that long. sticky side down, even though it doesn't seem to do much. Well, it really won't do much now that the uh, joint compound's already on there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back over it with a nice thin layer to really hold it on there. I'm just trying to saturate my tape here completely so that as I come back over with the next coat, I won't have to repeat anything or anything like that. Okay, that's pretty good for a first coat. I'll go ahead and let this dry overnight, and I'll be back. Okay, I don't have any cracking after the first layer. The joint tape, though, of course, wasn't completely covered, so now I'm going to apply a second layer and really begin to feather all my edges out. One thing I could have done before I started my repair was sand down the texture on the existing uh, drywall sheets, but I just really didn't want to uh, because I've done this like this in the past before and it works out great. So, And I really, really hate sanding because it makes such a mess.
So that's probably all that's going to be necessary for this coat. I'll come back once it's dry, sand it down, and then we'll shoot the texture on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the joint compound in this bucket right here, okay? And I'm going to mix it with some of the water that you got me, so I get it just right, because that's really too thick. Luckily, this is a process that doesn't take very long at all. I don't like that. You can probably not even see it, but it is the tiniest, that I would call a true orange peel. So I gotta open this up to get bigger blobs to shoot out. Now it's entirely possible that my mix is simply too thin and won't create the look that I'm going for. In which case, I'll add more and kind of start over. To adjust this, and to make sure that I don't create high spots, I'm just gonna knock this right back down. Scrape it off, start over. I'm gonna open it up all the way, and of course if this doesn't work, then I am forced to redo my mix, which is really not a big problem, but I just don't like doing it. That's gonna be okay. That's pretty much it. That took all of about 20 seconds. Now, in order to get this to match, I'm going to go over it slightly with my putty knife and kind of knock it down a little bit. Because the texture here is much larger than uh, what I've got here. Whereas this creates kind of a more rounded profile droplets, these are definitely flat. So I'm going to go over this with, uh, one time with my putty knife, and we'll kind of just take a look. I don't care for that offhand. And like I said, it's easy to redo if you don't like it. You scrape it off and shoot it again. Ah, there we go. That is pretty much perfect. And a little bit of paint and it's all done. If you don't have one of those texture guns, don't worry about it. If you're going to do something a little bit like this, just buy the orange peel in a can, or you can even just slap it on by hand and uh, do it that way. It's not absolutely critical that orange peel first. Sometimes I don't, depending on the size. If it's a really large size texture, I don't even bother shooting it. I'll just go ahead and slap it on and then uh, do it all by hand. But as you can see, it's really not all that difficult to uh, fix a wall. Now, there's other ways and orders of operations and things that you could do, but uh, for this project, this is what I did, and it worked out pretty well. I'm Mike Thompson. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.